My name is Caroline Page. I'm a RAF navigator. I'm currently flying with 28 Squadron on the Augusta Westland 101 Merlin, where I'm also a tactics instructor and electronic warfare specialist. So Caroline, yes. what motivated you to join the Royal Air Force? Um, the main motivation was flying. I'd always wanted to fly. I was flying um, gliders at 13. I got a pilot's license at 17. Um, and my father had a, a military background, he was in the army, so it all came together and I uh, joined the Air Force to fly. At the time the um, Air Force wasn't tolerant to uh, transgendered individuals um, and therefore if I had of identified myself as transgender I would have been um, either told to suppress it and just crack on or if I wanted to do something about it then to leave the Air Force. It all came to a crux in probably 97. I decided to do something about it and at the end of 98 um, I'd clearly made the decision that I was going to uh, follow through the process so I knew I had to inform my chain of command. In 1998 you were going to resign and you just said that you realised you didn't think that you were going to be able to keep your job. No. But instead what happened? I was allowed to keep my job. <laughs> How? Why? <laughs> well, I was quite surprised. Um, the base commander was very on side. It was very difficult. Um, the medical officer had made some inquiries through medical policy. Uh, that didn't go very well. There was uh, some people who had completely the wrong idea. Um, what were they saying? They were saying um, that it was a guy who liked wearing a dress at the weekend and Come Monday, he'll have forgotten all about it and go back to work. Just ignore him. That was their advice to her. And uh, what do we know is the truth? Oh, I wasn't a guy, that's for sure. So does that mean you were one of the first? I was the first in the Air Force. There was a lady called Joanne uh, who preceded me in the Army by a couple of months. Um, so, But I didn't get to know her until afterwards. And what kind of missions and tours have you done um, post-transition? Post-transition and um, returning to the Merlin, we went to Bosnia in uh, 2003 and it took three years to get the aircraft up to an operational standard. Uh, so I flew um, two tours in Bosnia. Uh, in 2005 we uh, went to Iraq uh, as part of Optelic. Uh, so I flew operational tours, I flew four operational tours in Iraq. And uh, in 2009 we withdrew from Iraq and moved to Afghanistan and since then I've done four in Afghanistan. See, my hair was redder then, it's all gone yeah. grey with the worry <laughs> of going out to these places. Yeah, it's strawberry, like strawberry blonde. Strawberry huh? blonde. Yeah. Used to be. Look at the dust on there. Um, <clears throat> these are a series of commendations I've received over the past um, five years. So I kind of really tried service because I, I received a citation from a general, I received one from um, an admiral, and also the latest one I received from the uh, Commander-in-Chief of Air Command. And that's my kind of pride, really, pride and joy, because that was um, announced in the New Year's Honours list in 2012, so that was quite a high um, level achievement, really. I was quite made up with that that somebody awarded me that. This one was uh, I received from the Permanent Under Secretary for State for Defence as uh, a People, um, People's Award, MOD People's Award, um, and it was a special award from the Permanent Under Secretary, um, recognising my achievements as a transgendered individual in trying to um, highlight the issues and make it better for individuals like myself to serve within the military. And, and all the time you've been serving alongside international troops, including Absolutely. American troops, right? Yes, I have um, some thank yous from the Portuguese Air Force for work I've done with them. I've had some thank yous from um, German Air Force and I've recently been working with European Defence Forces, doing a very similar job to the one I do in the uh, RAF. And of course I've worked uh, quite a lot with the American Forces as well in Iraq and Afghanistan and uh, I've worked closely with uh, American Forces on operations. And so how were the Americans with you? I never had a, an issue at all. Uh, the guys and girls that I worked with, um, I got on fine with them um, and they just appreciated me for the job that I was doing. Did they know that you're trans? 
Um, I don't think it's <laughs> difficult for people to uh, to know that I am. Um, and yes, they did. Yes, and, they did. And did those American troops have a, any issues at all working alongside you? Um, none that I'm aware of. I worked very closely with um, some senior officers uh, in Iraq. Um, I've flown American forces around uh, the combat zone. Um, I've recovered uh, American forces um, with um, uh, injuries. Um, I am quite proud of the fact that I, when I do work with American forces, there's no, never ever any question of my gender identity being an issue and they just appreciate me as a uh, serving military aviator. Has there ever been any circumstances where they've actually um, come out and thanked you in particular for a situation or an event or, you know? Um, no, because I think the, the job that you're doing, it's just accepted that you do the job, you don't need any special thanks. You get the thanks from the fact that the people are grateful for what you've achieved. They don't have to come up and say thank you very much. Quite often, um, you don't get that opportunity anyway because flying the aircraft, so um, it's briefings and then they get off the aircraft and disappear and go and do their own thing. So it's very hard for them to be able to approach you and say, um, cool, well done, thank you very much. And you don't expect people to say, cool, well done, thank you very much, because you're just doing your job. So as long as you do that, um, and the end result is they get where they want to go and achieve what they want to achieve, that's the job done, so you don't need thanks for that.